Hello! A bit of an update video today. Do you remember the rather lovely Beta 85 HD? Really smooth uh, Cine Whoop. Um, I didn't find it particularly a sort of an acro quad, but it was really good for cruising around. Slightly controversial, because when it was released, um, Beta FPV said, hey, you can fly this on 4S and it will cope okay. But they hadn't tested it under really serious conditions. So as soon as people started really hitting that throttle hard, and sort of permanently on, um, they found that ESCs would fail and bits would melt and it wasn't quite up to it. So they had to change their mind and say, actually, 2S or 3S on this one. But then I received a few goodies from Beta FPV in these lovely boxes here. And what I have in this one is their brand new ESC and uh, flight controller, which will handle 4S. But there's a caveat to this, and that's if you're gonna use these little 1105 motors, then your max KV should be about 5,000, and these are 6,000, so I still can't use those. So, in box number two, we have four new 5,000 KV motors, which will support the 4S. And just because Beta FPV are lovely people, they sent me this last package, and in here we've got a couple of their own brand 450 mAh 4S batteries, which are quite a bit bigger, obviously, than what we'd normally fly a week with, but this should be interesting. So uh, what I really wanted to do is I thought, oh, I like this how it flies. It flies really nice for sort of cruising around and taking images. I'll put this on a sort of more traditional frame like this one. I could make a sort of uh, a more traditional micro quad, but using 4S, which would be crazy, and the sort of the two inch props from this one. But I neglected to remember something, and that's that the flight controller is in the tiny whoop configuration, so it's like a 26 by 26 mil frame. Thus, it doesn't fit on any of my micro frames I have, and I didn't have time to get some sort of specific toothpick style thing that could take them. So what I'm actually gonna do is replace the flight controller and the motors on this one with this one, and let's see how it flies for us. Now we can go a little bit acro and a little bit crazy and see how it performs on these um, new flight controller and new motors. So I'm gonna put that together, join me. So I got as far as stripping this all down and I noticed two interesting things. One of which is this board for the original is in two pieces. So you've got the ESC part here and the flight controller there, whereas the new one is a single one. Although I did note that this has 32-bit ESCs can run D-Shot 1200, where the other one is a D-Shot 600 board. And I kind of thought, well, you know, this one flies really good. At some point, I'd probably put this all back together. Do I want to try and do something else with the other one? And I thought, why not try and 3D print something? So I went on to Thingiverse looking for people that have come across this already. And sure enough, there was one called the Calamero frame that's done by Dave C. FPV. So thanks to him for this design. I thought this might do the job because it's orientated in the right way for this board. So I went ahead and started printing this thing out and see if I could configure it. So here is what we ended up with. Basically, it's a little 3D printed attempt at uh, a sort of toothpick frame. So what I've got on here is um, the frame itself which I said they call the Calamero. Now this was a bit of a problem in that it, it was built, if you look around the back, there's a little gap here where the USB port would normally come. This didn't work on this particular flight controller because the flight controller had to go the other way for me to fit stuff in, which basically means I'm mounting it upside down, which means I had to tell people like that and that I had to remap the motors. Um, also to install this camera here, I came up with my own little print here. It only took this many iterations of uh, little mounting things and I've gone with uh, this is a Runcam Microswift and this little AKK uh, VTX which sits on the back of the camera and talks um, smart audio and things. I've got the Avant little 2 inch props which should be good uh, and uh, an XM Plus receiver just a little, little rubber thing to hold the battery in. Haven't tried it yet it'll be interesting to see um, if it flies, if it needs much tuning or if it's going to be crazy or just horrible. I guess we, we try and find out. Well, welcome to Overcast Strip, where we've got this heap of 3D printed bits and uh, Beta FPV motors and, and stuff to see if it will actually fly. Um, I thought I'd start myself off just with a 3S battery, just in case, and I can always work up to a 4S. A little bit worried about it all just holding together, but um, yeah, just worried, I guess. I mean, I had a quick hop with doors. It seemed okay, but no tuning or anything. 
I thought we'd just go for it and see what happens. So up we go for the maiden FPV flight. And I had to say, I wasn't expecting that much because I didn't really trust 3D printing out of just plain old PLA and expecting it to hold together. So you will see at this first start, I'm being very gentle and I, I'm really just going up to the end of the field, make sure the receiver's okay. It's an XM Plus, so I would expect it to be. And yeah, it's looking good. I'm getting a good vision from the camera. I'm not getting any sort of jitters and um, it's surprisingly smooth on the turns and stuff. So that's a surprise, a very pleasant surprise. You can see the punch there is not bad. I mean, this is not something that's really been designed for 3S. This is, this is really 4S motors, but we still get a reasonable amount of punch off of it. I'm not getting a huge amount of forward speeds and you can see slight jitters there when I go full throttle, but yeah, it's pretty good, I think, isn't it? Um, certainly enough for me to say, you know what? We need to bring this in and talk about having a um, 4S flight. So that's what I did. Well, from the point of view of looking through my goggles, that was surprisingly drama free. Pretty damn smooth as well. I really do think the little run cam micro is helping there. Especially in these conditions, I've just been flying a couple of other micros with CMOS cameras and they were really suffering in the conditions and darkening out. This beautiful really flying nice um, so these 5000 kV motors aren't really made for 3s they're made for 4s so this is what I've put in now I've got the 450 here from beta FPV it's about as heavy as the quad itself which is not ideal I think something like a 300 4s would be great but they don't seem to do those so let's try on the 450 a little bit heavy um, but yeah let's see if it uh, produces more power and stuff well straight after I took off I could feel that it, it wasn't feeling very good there. There was a bit of vibrations um, really on the, the D or the P, so let's bring it down, tune it some more. So took it out again after this initial tweak of the P and D, uh, basically just dropped them down a bit and it's feeling better. Um, it's looking okay in the picture, but I can still hear a slight D term there. So this was the third attempt. And this was a bit weird because I was actually expecting things to get a lot better here, but to me it felt slightly worse. Um, I was still just going around making sure, you know, we've got a bit more speed, we've got a bit more power, which seems to be coming through okay. But yeah, there was definitely something weird about this, and I found out exactly what the problem was as soon as I landed. So I noticed in that tuning, the tune was actually getting worse and worse when I looked at it and the vibrations coming off it were a bit different. And when I landed off that first battery, I picked it up uh, and realized the problem there. I've got, if you can see here, screws coming away um, and we've lost one completely here, uh, aside from the fact that that's um, a bit wonky, is that motor can actually move completely freely. So that's no good at all. So we need to uh, sort this out, put a bit of Loctite in these and, and redo the screws before we can go out and try 4S again. Okay, we've used Loctite, we've put the screws back in. We are ready to try again. Let's see uh, what happens this time, straight onto 4S uh, to see if it flies nicely or not, or at all. So I'd already gone through the part where I'd gone through the, the little bits of tuning that I had done already and it was fairly good. What we found is it would be pretty smooth and then under really high throttle, you'd get some oscillations. So there's probably still some stuff to do there. But essentially, um, the quad was flying fairly smoothly, not making a noise, not getting hot motors, and I was able to, to basically fresh it about a bit. Uh, getting some reasonable speed here and some pretty good punch. I mean, it's still murdering the batteries when we, we actually go for it properly. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's flying nicely. And again, that camera really does make a difference when you're trying to pick your position where you're wanting to go and stuff. It's really, really much nicer. And it stood up to the odd, you know, bash into a tree and things like that. I think to really get the max speed out of here, I'd still need a little bit more camera angle. And that would actually mean changing either the way I've installed the VTX, which I'm not too happy with it's the only bit of the build I didn't like it's kind of a bit haphazard the way it's just fixed to the back of the camera not very well 
but in order to get more tilt on the camera I either have to make that mount a little bit taller to allow it to have more room or I have to take that VTX off because the VTX is the bit that's stopping me tilting a bit more and uh, install the VTX somewhere else but um, not a bad first flight so I went back and put the other battery through it and obviously the intention with this one was just have more of a mess around because I didn't have to do any more tuning I mean that's not true it still needs to be tuned a bit more but I thought it would be good to, to give it a bit more of a thrash so I put the GoPro out and just to see if I could get some sort of speed runs on it and uh, see if I could kind of convey the sort of sense of speed you get from it I mean you, you get a certain amount of the impression from watching it this way but um, it, it looks quite cool through the GoPro Of course we've got the XM Plus in here and it's absolutely no hassle at all to, to pretty much fly wherever you like, you know, it, even a kilometre away we're still going to have a reasonable good, good signal even if we're quite low down. So you can really, the combination of having that receiver and a decent camera really lets you mess around a bit more where in other similar small quads you, you might want to do that. Anyway, this was all going quite well and I was doing my GoPro passes when something happened and I got a little bit too close uh, and what I basically did as I flew along I heard a big clatter um, I thought I'd hit my camera and knocked it over but I could I could feel that something wasn't right in the quad so I, I brought it down fairly quickly and uh, had a look I think I may have hit the camera there and taken out my little uh, VTX antenna which is nowhere to be seen, so I have to stop flying for now. Uh, aside from that, it felt pretty good. Still a little bit more tuning to do, getting a bit of deoscillation on high uh, throttle, but uh, it feels pretty smooth, feels pretty good. And here's the little curry pick today, which, can, can I name something where I've used somebody else's frame and bits, well, I have done anyway, so there you go. Yes, it's absolutely fine. Um, it's just there was a little bit more damage than I thought to the uh, VTX there. The VTX was actually the only bit I wasn't too happy about my mounting. I wanted it to screw into the camera, but because of these connectors, it, it wouldn't go on, so I had to sort of use a sticky. And obviously, I think that was a bit loose, and then that um, antenna caught. And what it's actually done is, I'll show you a close-up of this. If you see these three little solder pads, that's where the UFL connector used to be and that got rips right off. But I think perhaps rather than trying to fix it to the back there, I might put this flat and have the antenna coming somewhere else for next time. But um, aside from a little bit more tuning in there, I was really happy with the performance. So yes, these Beta FPV motors work really well. The flight controller and the ESCs work really well. The only weak part of the whole build was, was the bits I did, which... <laughs> was still fun to do and I'm sure Beta FPV will be putting together some forest compatible whoops or toothpick style quads that they could uh, use but yeah I, I quite enjoyed building that and I quite enjoyed flying uh, forest on this the the only thing I, I would like I think is a, a smaller forest battery they do seem to be a bit thin on the ground now I've not seen anything below a sort of a 400 and I know other people are using two 300 uh, milliamp hour 2s's in series but yeah something around the 300 mark I think would bring the weight down and then the power to weight ratio would be better but we wait for that to happen in the meantime of course I'll I'll put links down below for this frame and I'll, I'll upload my little camera plate holder if anybody's interested to uh, Thingiverse uh, and of course we'll have the links for Beta FPV to where you can get these motors and battery and flight controller and that sort of thing I um, hope that was helpful and uh, a little bit of fun and I'll catch you in the next video bye for now well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.